Um, and certainly we can have a very distorted relationship to pain, to difficulty, to challenge. Some of that is personal conditioning, some of that is cultural conditioning, where we're just in a way we're taught it's wrong, often. Not always, but often. You know, it's just wrong. You should have been able to control things. There's, um, you know, there's no reason for you to feel what you're feeling. Other people are worse off. Um, all kinds of things so that when something is difficult, as in Sylvia's immortal example now, we add what her granddaughter thought was even worse and adding the horseradish to the gefilte fish. So um, we can have a really, really hard thing going and in fact make it worse. We get isolated instead of feeling a sense of community with others and recognizing this is just part of the human condition, whatever it is. We blame ourselves as though we could successfully say, well, I've thought about it really carefully and I've decided never to be afraid again. Or I've suffered long enough, it's over now. Certainly we can affect the conditions and, and influence a lot of things, but the way we feel, we seem to feel we should be in complete control, it's just a fantasy. And yet we pile on so much of the time, projecting into the future. It's very interesting to notice, say, with physical pain, how much of the suffering is coming from the actual sensation and how much is coming from all that anticipation. It's going to be this way forever. Oh, it'll be so much worse in a year. Right? It's just, it's very powerful to begin to understand. Not that nothing's gonna hurt. I mean, some things in life really hurt. They just do. I don't care how open-minded you are, uh, they hurt. And we can pile on. And we have a lot of power to learn not to do that, right? So we learn to relate to difficulty, to pain, to uh, that which is unpleasant differently. Then there's a whole teaching about being mindful of neutral experience, just kind of ordinary routine, repetitive blah moments where we usually kind of numb out, we go to sleep, we wait for something more stimulating or exciting to happen in order to feel alive. So mindfulness is by definition a quality of awareness where we might fully feel the pleasure of something, but we don't do that extra thing of either clinging, how am I gonna keep it from ever changing or we're getting weird about it in some way. And we can fully open to painful experience without adding the things that make it worse, but rather having a more compassionate, heartful experience that allows us to connect with one another. And we can actually wake up and be aware during neutral experience instead of being half alive. That is mindfulness, being aware of what's happening in the present moment without any grasping, aversion, or delusion. Delusion in this sense, in this context, is that kind of numbness or spacing out when something's not very gripping for us. So the thing about mindfulness is that it's not dependent on its object. It's about how we're relating to that object. So even though we kind of believe that ordinary sort of neutral or unpleasant experience in meditation practice is a bad sign. It's actually not. It's just what's happening in the moment. And we tend to believe that really pleasant, extraordinary things happening in our meditation is a really good sign. And it's not. Because it all depends on how we're relating to it. The calm, the peace, the joy, the sense of sufficiency, the sense of inner abundance, the love come from that relationship, not from...